Right, I'm gonna build up the rocks now, the crags, using more of the same, really. French ultramarine, burnt umber, and a little bit of alizarin crimson, just to warm it up slightly. So I'm after a nice natural gray. A little bit of alizarin crimson in there, just to enhance it slightly. And now I'm gonna work into the crags. Initially, I'm looking for areas in which to basically split it up into light and dark areas. So by applying that dark area there, I created a light area alongside it. Soften that off a little bit, blend it in. Same here, there's an edge there. So if I want to define that edge, just run the dark tone alongside it. I need to break this up. We need to sort of suggest cracks and little different surfaces. Just soften that off. And a slightly smaller brush on the job. Just softening it off, blending it in. It's important to leave that highlight just along the top edge. Otherwise, I'll lose it. It'll just blend into the hillside behind it. All will be lost. There we go. Now it has to have a sort of a random quality to it, so I'm sort of dipping into different areas. I'll just do it a little bit over there and then come back over here and chop and change around a little bit. I've swapped brushes actually. I've just gone for the smaller brush to apply the rock detail. I'm using the slightly larger brush now just to soften it off. Again down here we've got this area that I've left as a highlight. Just put a few dots of paint in there just to break it up. Let's go back up there. Put a crack, a crack in the crag. And all the time as I'm painting over that that I've already painted, it gets darker. So we're gradually working from light to dark tones. As always, one of the most important things is to try and avoid any making anything that is too pattern-like or too repetitive. The rocks here. Now these rocks also want a little bit of detail in, but they don't want quite so much because they're a little bit further back. I don't want them to, I want them to be there and visible, but I don't want them to compete too much with the foreground. I've got to be careful how I apply that. It's probably enough actually. Just to break it up and give it shape mustn't forget my rock in the foreground, just breaking that up. It's important to do this. Uh, if you think about it, if a rock just has the one tone or the one colour on it, then it can, it can look flat. The minute you apply a second tone to it, it instantly gives it shape. It instantly uh, breaks it down into more than one surface. I'm using the same colour here, just down, just down here to create a bit of shape in the hillside. There we go. 
right, switching back to the slightly larger brush here. I'm going to add just a weeny bit of French ultramarine to it, so it's more of a blue-grey than a, a plain old neutral grey. I just want to suggest a few contours in the foreground here. So here, the light tone of this rock in the foreground needs to have a, a darker tone behind it, really, to create that contrast. Otherwise, well, otherwise it just doesn't stand out. It doesn't have the shape. A little bit at this side. All right, one more pass, I think. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of everything, a little bit more burnt umber into the mix, tiny bit of Alice Ring Crimson. Just returning to these crags here, just referring to my photograph and my sketch, see where those cracks appear. Again, by darkening that piece, it makes that part appear a little bit lighter. So we get the variation throughout. It's starting to take shape now. As I say, all the time, trying carefully not to create any repetitive patterns. bit more down there. The very distant hills, I'm going to leave as they are. It helps to keep the distance. We can use detail as a way of controlling depth within a painting, so objects that are further away will have less detail visible on them. Darken up a little bit more, some really dark tones. Reach for an even smaller brush, I think. A few narrow lines in there to suggest cracks in the rock. I don't want to overdo it. And in places it's still damp, that grey that I've already put down is still damp, so that's got nice, nice soft edges. Highlights, tiny dark tone just along the underside. Turns them into rocks, boulders. I think 
make a little bit of detail just along the edge of the bit there would be nice. Keeping it loose, keeping it random. Just those few rocks there, I think. We'll keep those, make that a little bit darker. And so there we have the finished painting. So the most important thing when painting crags, or in fact rocks of any sort, is to maintain a random quality to it. Also, use tone and colour to create depth in your painting. Distant objects, such as distant mountains, should appear lighter in tone and cooler in colour. It helps to keep them back. Also, keep your detail down to a minimum. Stop fiddling. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.